Hello, in this video I'm going to go through a lesson that we did about institutions and audiences uh, and focusing on harbour mass public sphere theory. It should be helpful for your newspapers um, case study part of your exam. Right, learning intentions, we're going to learn to understand and apply harbour mass public sphere theory and understand how um, audience use of news, how, how new media might harm or strengthen democracy and society. Uh, right, here he is, uh, Jürgen Habermas. He has written extensively on the ways that information, news and events are processed in the public sphere, i.e. the way that news is talked about um, and discussed by the public. Where and how does that happen? How effectively does that happen? Uh, he believes that if you're going to have a functioning democracy, if people are going to know what they want to vote for, then that depends on a public which is informed, so they know what's going on in the world and what the issues are, that they're aware, and crucially, he thinks that it's healthy for, for democracy for people to debate and talk about the issues of the day. So, for example, if there's a war like what's happening in Libya recently, he believes that people should uh, talk about that. You know, ordinary people, not just politicians, in order to, 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 to develop their own views and know who they want to vote for. And that way you get strong democracy. Uh, the, right, Habermas saw the public sphere as being very strong in the past, uh, before the mass media, because people came together and talked in, in coffee shops and things like that, particularly in Western Europe. Okay, I mean, we did more detail on that in the lesson, but that's basically what you need to know. He believes that the mass media and globalisation has reduced the effectiveness of the public sphere, because then, when you, let's say you've got a newspaper, um, which is then spread all across the country, uh, you get a reduction of plurality. You, you get fewer voices um, discussing the news. Do you see what I mean? Because if you get a newspaper and you, there might be five, six, seven um, main newspapers that people read in the country, and, and that is very influential on what people think, um, but isn't, there isn't enough debate. Uh, so, for example, if you talk, think about it globally, the Wall Street Journal, News of the World, Australia, and all of these are examples of, of papers um, owned by the same person, all owned by Rupert Murdoch. Um, and Habermas would say that that's damaging to democracy because sort of one, I know it's not, he would argue strongly that it's not just his own voice, but it's an example of the way that um, certain ideas or ideologies or voices are dominating uh, the world and there's not enough different voices to, to question that. Right, what about new media then? The influence of new media, have a look at the Oxford Mail as a case study example, but then you've got loads, haven't you? You've got Facebook, Twitter, Google News, blogs, loads, loads, loads and loads of stuff where news is also carried. So there's been a huge change in the news industry uh, brought about by the influence of new media. Um, we looked at this question, how, well, how, has the, how has new media affected the quality of debate in the public sphere? How might the influence of new media be said to strengthen or weaken a functioning public sphere? Is it good or bad for democracy? Uh, and in the lesson we discussed that at length, we came up with these um, ideas. So you could, could argue that it strengthens it because there's lots of opportunity for comments and debate. So leaving comments on news stories, if we go to uh, the mail online here, Okay, so here's a story about um, a boy aged nine caught drink driving, and then you've got 14 comments on that. Okay, so it's an example of people debating the news, and a hard must would say that's good for the audience to do that. Um, you've also, it's very accessible, and you don't need lots of money to join in this debate. Um, however, you could argue that it weakens it because of the quality of the discussion. You know, it's. Di uh, for example, the impact of anonymity. Um, people don't have to say who they are on the internet, and therefore people perhaps tend to say more extreme things than they would do if it was a face-to-face -face interaction. Um, some issues about accessibility, and just the scale of it, TMI, too much information going on, uh, which leads to a poor quality of debate. Okay, so strengthens, yes, there's lots of opportunity for um, debate through new media, and that might be useful to an audience, it might help an audience to uh, come to their own understanding, and therefore it might be good for society. However, you could argue that it weakens it because of the questionable quality of the discussion that goes on. Twitter would be a good example there. Lots of debate in, uh, on Twitter about news, um, but obviously in a tweet you've only got 100, what is it, 140, 180 characters. Um, it could be argued that the quality of depth and detail that you can go into is quite limited. So that is just a quick overview of the public sphere theory.